civil danger warning. A disaster of unknown type has occurred. Number of casualties are not yet known. Outbreak of a highly contagious virus. Normal programming has been suspended. Stay calm and stay indoors. Gary. Gary, keep pedaling. You can do it. This is not a test. Listen, I don't care how dizzy you feel. Just keep pedaling or it's back to the salt box for you. That's it. The capacitor is charging. Okay, great. Let's get started. The Glorious Free Republic of Yorkshire Radio Show. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Glorious Free Republic of Yorkshire radio show. Gary is pedalling away on the bicycle dynamo and we should have enough power for around half an hour. So we'll be bringing you government approved news and stories from Free Yorkshire, the mightiest of the many new nation states that, several decades ago, emerged from the troubled era of early 21st century Britain. My name, of course, is Lloyd Becklesnip and we have a packed show for you tonight. Coming up soon is the second part in a short series of reports that will reveal how our food gets from farm to table. We'll be meeting Stu Arbiter. He'll be shedding some light on what goes on behind the scenes at a swamp mongrel abattoir. I'd actually vomit onto the swamp mongrels, which was a disgusting scene really. I mean, you, you've had a water out factory floor, you've seen how disgusting it is in here. Think about how more disgusting it gets when you include vomit in it. And later, for our regular feature, Spotlight On, we'll hear from Bob Menston and learn all about his role as a nettle festival organiser. This one here, oh, it's just coming past now. It's, it's Mrs Tinsbury's. It's, it's the lovely bric-a-brac. Uh, one, it's, oh, it's lovely. Every item crafted from the nettle. And if there's time, we may even pay a visit to Sly Winifred in the Gadget Dungeon. But first, here's the plague forecast for the week. On Monday, it'll be mainly moist and oozing, but by Wednesday, scabs will be dry and flaky before a fine mist of blood and pus settles in for the weekend. Later, we'll be letting you know the latest prizes that could be yours if you inform on your neighbours to the authorities. But first, it's time for the second in our series, From Farm to Table, and this time I went to visit Stu Arbiter, who runs a good old traditional family business that involves the relentless slaughter of Yorkshire's very own national livestock, the swamp mongrel. Here's what he had to say when I caught up with him at his abattoir. The glorious republic of your entire radio show. Hello, I've come to the Arbiter Swamp Mongrel Processing Plant and I am going to be speaking to the man himself, Stuart Arbiter. Stuart. Please call me Stu, straight off the bat. Oh, no. None of this Stuart, that's my father, <laughs> who I uh, inherited the business off. Uh, he still works it, sweeps the floors, gets all the guts up. Quite messy at the end of the day, is it? Oh, yeah, it's messy all day, to be honest, not just end of day. Oh, guts, giblets, you name it. They come in here, all about floors. Disgusting. I would have thought, having worked with the curious animal that is the swamp mongrel, you would have grown some affection for them over the years? Well, not really, because I am allergic uh, to them, which uh, makes it quite difficult, as you can imagine. Ah, right, so that explains the all-over rubber suit. Yeah, all-over rubber suit. I mean, look at this. Let me just peel this off. Look at that arm there. I mean, there's rivulets of sweat yeah. coming out. Oh, that's what the bag at the back is for. Absolutely. Let's see, the little tap at the back. I call it refreshing myself. Let's off a bit of steam, you know what I mean. So, Stuart. Yes. Our Stu, listen- Stu, please, Stu. Stu. Sorry, Stu. Mm. Our listeners are fascinated to know the process. Can you walk us through step by step? I can. Do you want to come around factory floor? Oh, no, got- I would love to. Right, yeah, yeah, keep, yeah. That, keep that hard hat on. And the, uh, the waders. Oh yeah, they're, you need them. You're going to be you're going to be deep in it. In okay. Uh, the gloves with the the steel knuckles. Well, you, what you don't want is a mongrel getting hold of you. Ah. Uh, Swamp mongrel grabs you. You've had it. Honestly, right. you know the dangerous things. These. Um, that's why. And well, I'll, t- I'll take you to the first bit of plant. This is the stun area. This is where we stun all the swamp mongrels. Uh, as you can see, uh, there's Jeremy there. He's going to throw one in. Watch this. Can you hear it? Can you hear it screaming? That is quite haunting. It is, isn't it? Yeah. That's the kind of sound you'll take to your grave. Yeah, yeah. Now watch this bit. Whoa! Look at that. Took its head off straight away. Yeah, yeah. Can you can you smell that? God, that is quite that is quite the pungent aroma. Yeah. And so, 
I mean, the sweeping blade mm -hmm. that took the head, not of just, of, what was it, about 10 mongrels in one go there? Yeah, yeah, you line them up, the scream, shoom, straight off. Is this the most humane way to, to kill the, the swamp mongrel? No, but it's the most fun, I've got to say. Uh, we've, got to make it, we've got to make it fun for ourselves in here. You know, you, you're chopping up swamp mongrels all day and gutting them. I mean, you got to you got to have some enjoyment, aren't you, in your job? You can see the little baskets there as well uh, with the scores on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's what we aim for. So uh, you get a, get a ten-pointer in there, you're laughing. You get a bonus for that. Oh, I can see. Well, Jeremy's top of the board. He is, yeah. He's your yeah. star employee. He is. He's very good. He's very good with his choppers, is our Jeremy. Is there any extra points awarded for style or, or performance? No, it's really just a, a bucket a bucket scenario. You know, you get you get you get the heads cleaning. Sometimes we do deduct wage if it, if it goes half in, you know, if there's half a face in there. Well, if there's only half a face in the bucket, the other half has gone into the meat process, and that's not good. Absolutely, absolutely. We do get some complaints sometimes that people find bits that aren't supposed to be in there. Well, yeah, a bit, I've had a bit of teeth in my swamp mongrel casserole the other week. Yeah. You know, I, I crunched through it. People forget where this stuff comes from. It's mm. all going to be processed. I think it's just nice in there for them. But you, you will get, you know, the odd discrepancy. You'll get a tooth here and there. And after the decapitation, mm. uh, where have you brought me to now? Right, now this is the gutter. So once you've got the head off, you can go straight through the neck and uh, rip out the guts. And as you can see, we've got several staff here uh, with the the gloves on again. Oh, pardon me, that, that smell does get me every time in here. Um, they go straight in through the neck, rip out the insides. <laughs> Now the insides can be used. You'll notice that we have, I've got a gift shop here. Uh, we do make accessories and nice things for, for you know, for, for nights out. A uh, bit of, bit of jewellery and things out of the swamp monster in it. Bringing the old phrase to life there, you have, literally do have guts for garters. Yeah, we do, we do, yeah. The Glorious Free Republic of Yorkshire radio show. And we'll hear the rest of that fascinating report in a moment. But first, a word from this week's sponsor. Tired of the bitter taste of swamp mongrel burgers? Exhausted from chewing seemingly indestructible swamp mongrel chop? Then get yourself a string of swampy Yorkshire goodness. That's right, it's the swamp mongrel sausage. Now guaranteed to be 50% tastier, because there's now 50% less swamp mongrel linen. What do we fill the extra 50% with? Well, what you don't know can't hurt you, right? On an unrelated note, new government guidelines mean that any dead relatives that are awaiting collection by your local waste disposal team must now be kept refrigerated. The swamp mongrel sausage. It tastes good. It tastes like family. And now back to our interview with Swamp Mongrel Slaughterer, Stu Arbiter. So once the, the, the guts get sucked out mm. in one fell swoop, yeah. you have the Swamp Mongrel hide intact, yeah. like a little empty skin sack. Yeah. Where, where do they end up? You can eat the skin. Right. A lot of people don't eat the Swamp Mongrel skin, but you can. Thorns and all? This is how I eat mine. I take the thorns out. Mm -hmm. I don't want any of that. You can use them as toothpicks if you want. Um, and then I'll just go, I'll have the skin me. And you don't mind the warts? No, 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 warts and all, <laughs> as they say. Uh, you can have the warts, they're, they're not harmful. Some people claim that they're harmful and they'll affect you in later life, but there's no, you know, there's no there's no backing for that. So that rash you have all over your face, that's got nothing to do nothing with it? Nothing to do with it, no, 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 nothing to do with it. I think the allergy's just from seeing them. It's kind of a, a, a spiritual thing as well, if you get if you if you get what I mean. Well, you mentioned your your allergy mm. before it's open. Were there any more intense symptoms? A lot of vomiting. Okay, uh, I'd actually vomit onto the swamp mongrels, which was a disgusting scene, really. I mean, you, you've had a water out factory floor. You've seen how disgusting it is in here. Think about how more disgusting it gets when you include vomit in it. Well, yeah, but certain people, that's how they prepare their swamp mongrel. Actually, it's. The only way they can stomach it, it's like the the, the birds digesting absolutely the, their food for the young. They yeah. have to vomit on a, a swamp mongrel before it's palatable. There's so many ways of eating these things now, you know. So you've beheaded them. Mm -hmm. You've you've cleaned out the innards and and repackaged them in their hide. What is the 
the final process before they they get shipped off to our our wonderful supermarkets well the the final thing we have to we have to seal in the gas obviously from mm -hmm. the carcass because uh people like to smell it some of them there were well, some weirdos out there and there was that explosion last year mm -hmm. in which 30 people mm -hmm. died they so did, obviously yeah. we need we don't to really leave. Oh, okay. we well, um, <laughs> we, we went through all the court proceedings with that. Uh, we, uh, I'm not yeah, suggesting you were yeah, at fault at all. No, 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 but it does come up now and again, and we have to we have to nip it in the bud because uh, there there were allegations that it was uh, due to my negligence, and it wasn't at all. Accidents do happen. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a factory. So you seal in the gas, mm -hmm. and as long as the uh, swamp mongrel is then opened in a uh, inert vacuum. They're Absolutely. perfectly safe. Yeah, yeah. There's no risk to life. In yeah, the I mean, it says it right there on the packaging. You know, you've got to open it, open with caution. That's why that big sticker's there. Well, you know, if anyone is foolish enough to open a swamp mongrel within 30 yards of any electrical device, it's their fault. They've been given fair warning. They know the circumstances. It's up to them to Absolutely. proceed safely. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Um, do you want to... Uh, we've got some uh, chocolate swamp mongrels here. These are fun foot kids. Do you want to take one of them with you as well? Are all the swamp mongrels got that kind of terrifying face on them? Yeah, well, that's the just, we've tried to capture just before they get their head lobbed off. Okay, we tried to capture that expression. It's they, fun for kids, isn't it? Really, they can then have a little practice because you've got the candy cane blade. Yeah, so they can use yeah. that. Well, to, that's what we try to do. We try to encourage the kids because you never know. One day they might want a job here working with us. It's uh, it's fun, isn't it? Again, I mean, we've got a youth program for uh, training them up. Oh, so that's why you have the little electronic chips and the chocolate ones, so you can identify the the best slaughterers. Yeah, of absolutely. A, of a swamp mongrel. Yeah, we're not transgressing any kind of data regulations there by tracking the every everybody's child in Yorkshire, basically. No, no, it's just a bit of fun, isn't it? It's you all know, government approved. It, it so, is, of course, you know. it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We 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 try and uh, identify uh, potential uh, potential workers. I mean, you know while they're eating some chocolate. So, where's the harm in that? Where is the harm in that? Mm. Stu? Yes, thank you. Thank yes. you very much yeah. for your time. Right, I'll get back to it. Cheers. Thank you, and goodbye. The Glorious Free Republic of Yorkshire Radio Show. What an illuminating feature that was. It's good to know the care and attention that's taken in farming Yorkshire's prized critters. But we cannot live on meat and blood alone. The government tried us on that diet and the mutation rates were just unacceptable. So we also need to eat some greens. And what's the most nutritious and tasty green that the fields of this great land can manage to produce these days? That's right, the nettle. Where does the nettle come from? How does it grow? Nobody knows. And that's why we have regular nettle festivals to appease the nettle gods. For the latest installment of our Spotlight On feature, I went to visit the Skelmanthorpe Nettle Festival, where organiser Bob Menston showed me around. And so here I am in a Skelmanthorpe for the marvellous Nettle Festival, celebrating our, our wonderful nettle harvest. And I'm here with one of the festival organisers, Bob Menston. Bob, what a fantastic day. What a brilliant parade. You must be very proud of how it's all going. Oh, so proud, Lloyd. It's wonderful here. And it's lovely the government's given its validation to the, the ninth annual Nettle Festival. Oh, it's a, it's a cracking day as always. Oh, yes. Well, the government very kindly has uh, uh, agreed not to take taxes away from the town for one week so that you can actually afford not only the, the money, but the time to put on your wonderful event. Oh, yes, and it's nice of them to hand the coupons out as well for us to be able to go ahead with the day. Do you need to see my coupon, Lloyd? Uh, yes, if you could show it to me just briefly, to just to double check. In, so, here you are. OK, and that all, that all looks in order, I think. That's a relief. And, uh, oh, no, is that? It runs out in August, it's just, just September. Oh, oh, hang on, Lloyd. Oh, it might be the wrong one. Hang on. Hang on. Is this one all right? Well, that one is all right, but oh. you haven't handed in your out-of-date coupon, and so you will be paying double tax next week, of course, for that oversight. As long but, as it's not the van. As long as it's not the van. So, but uh, as we can see behind this, uh, there is just such an array of wonderfully coloured and bright parade bands. Uh, would you like to talk us through a couple of them, Bob? Oh, of course, yes. This one here, oh, it's just coming past now. It's, it's Mrs Tinsbury's. It's, it's the lovely bric-a-brac uh, one. It's, oh, it's lovely. Every item crafted from the nettle. 
Okay, yes, so I see a lovely um, nettle scarf there. That must keep your neck nice and warm during the winter with constant stinging. Exactly. And uh, there's the uh, nettle bookmark there for the one literary person in the town. Obviously, you have your assigned one reader in the town. Daryl, of course, he's been reading for the last four years and he's got very good at it. Many of the words he understands and sometimes we'll go round and he'll read them to us, you know. He, he can spell nettle. So he must have had a hand in the... in The uh, the, the Cineage, yes, the Cineage. Uh, you'll see all around you today. He's, he's helped with that. He's, he's a good lad, Daryl. He's a good lad. And I can see uh, with the, the next float coming up here, we've got a, a massive pot of tea, so we all must know that. <laughs> Feeling thirsty, Lloyd. Oh, yes. Who, who wouldn't <laughs> like a refreshing, yet somewhat uh, stimulating cup of nettle tea? Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? If you're feeling a thirst in, in, in the heat of a, an exciting festival like this, it's, it's nice to just get a, a, a cup down. You know, you, There's a small bit of coughing, but, you know, it passes. Well, either it passes... Or you pass. Well, yeah. But your odds are generally pretty good as a 90% survival rate. You don't forget the green colour in a hurry as well. It's nice, isn't it? It's yeah. eye-catching. It is, and it, it's slightly greener on the way out, weirdly. Well, yes, there is that. But uh, it, it's part of a balanced diet. But sometimes. it's also so acidic, it's quite good for getting lime scale off a bath or clearing a plug hole. Oh, that's what my son Graham says. He says, Dad, I'll, I'll, I'll do my business if, if you... Pardon my language, Lloyd, around the toilet rim and it cleans at the same time. Mm -hmm. Oh, is that the next float's on its way? Oh, here we go. <laughs> this is a tribute, Lloyd, if you don't mind me saying to oh, the spiritual adversary and, and welcoming party of, of the nettle, the dock leaf. Ah, yes, yes. So... Where you get your yin, you have your yang. Where you have your dark, you have your light. And where you have your nettle, you have your dock leaf. That's right. And of course, the docking leaf is so famed for its healing power. It's where we get the word doctor. Yes. And, oh, docking, isn't it? Isn't it such a relief from the scratching light? Oh, I know, I know. The constant... Well, it's oh. just in the air in Skelmanthorpe now, oh. especially during harvest time when the... The nettle pollen gets released through the harvesting. It's just one week of constant itching, but that's why we have this parade to take our minds off yes. the, the, the scratching and the bleeding. Yes, there's, there's a small price to pay, and just put a thicker jumper on, I say, Lloyd, or an extra pair of gloves. You, you'll be mostly okay. <laughs> the glorious Free Republic of Yorkshire radio show. And we'll hear the rest of that report in a moment. But first, here's a little taste of what's also available to listen to on the Free Yorkshire Network. Welcome to the Podcaster's Podcaster. My name is Kirk L. Jerk, and this is the podcast where we interview podcasters about when they have other podcasters on their podcast. I've spoken to Adam Bluxton about the time he had Mark Macaroon on his podcast. And he said something like, uh, usually videos make me physically sick. So I took that as quite a massive compliment. I've also spoken to Richard Heron about the time he had Adam Bluxton on his podcast. I'm happy to allow a man to watch me defecate. And I've even spoken to Mark Macaroon about the time he had Richard Heron on his podcast. I certainly can't condone anything he did. There's no way to, to let him off the hook. And to celebrate our 1,000th episode, I'll be interviewing myself about the time I interviewed myself for the 500th episode. So, Kirk, do you have anything to say to your former self about how you interviewed yourself for the 500th episode? Oh, Kirk, I was so naive after only 500 episodes. Back then I thought the world revolved around me. I've since learnt that the world does not revolve around me. It's the universe that does. The Podcaster's Podcaster, the podcast for podcasters who are serious about podcasting about podcasting. And now, back to Bob and Skelmanthorpe. souvenir bag um, 
Oh no, I haven't I haven't got one of those. What can we expect to find nestled away in our, our <laughs> nettle bag? <laughs> I like that Lloyd. It's, oh, there's a variety of treats. There's some nettle gummies. If your baby's not crying enough, mm-hmm. a little bit too quiet, nobody trusts a quiet baby, they're up to something. It might get taken away in one of the mini black vans and nobody wants that. So you've got to oh. make sure your your baby's good and agitated. Yes. The little gummy dummy helps with that. It's, it's essential. And, uh, oh, and the best thing of all, there's a commemorative miniature of a, a swamp mongrel romping and rolling and enjoying itself in its natural habitat, the nettle. Well, it's, yes, I know. We're all aware that the swamp mongrel feasts on what's left of the nettle once we strip it of all its useful stinging and juices and... We just take the sludge out mm-hmm. and then pour it into the Swamp Mongrel Valley. There's a few of them get drowned, but the ones that then just swim around and splash in the nettle slurry, it's its one of the seven wonders of Yorkshire's nature. Oh, yes. When their eyes light up, don't they, Lloyd? Well, that's an allergic reaction to it the is. nettles. Oh, of course. Well, whether happiness or an intense itching, the nettle, is, the nettle really is the, the, the plant to be. And we can see the final float in the parade just turning around the corner here. Of course, this is the the biggest float in the parade as we pay homage to the the nettle god. We must remain still. It's vital we remain still in in this process, Lloyd. We we have lost men before, good men. Mm -hmm. It's a very still, Lloyd. We cannot anger it. No, we cannot anger it. Well, we all know that the the nettle god John Nettles if you do anything wrong he is there to to correct the the scales of justice with his retribution he's an angry god but he is just Mm -hmm. and he'll strike so we must remain still it's past it's past what a success Lloyd I, I, I hope you'll agree Yes, yes, we we do agree, and, and on behalf of the government, we'd like to thank you for, for pulling off yet another successful festival. You will be getting your living licence uh, renewed, so you're still good for another year, Bob. Oh, Lord, thank you, thank you, Lloyd. Do I hand my coupon for the end of the interview now, or after? You need to do it right now. Oh, you've missed the window. Oh. I'm very sorry about that, Bob. Uh, there will be a retribution to be decided uh, shortly. But don't worry, there won't be anything worse than below the knee. Oh, God. Goodbye, Lloyd. Goodbye, Bob. And thank you again. Unfortunately, I spoke too soon in reassuring Bob that it would be nothing worse than below the knee. His infringement was reviewed by the authorities and his living permit was revoked. So, I'd like to dedicate this episode to the memory of that forlornly moist man. Our thoughts and prayers are obviously with Bob's family. As you all know, when Barry, cursed be his name, deleted most of the internet in the early 20s due to forgetting to back it up over the weekend, technology was set back a peg or two. Mobile phones especially suffered during the great deletion. But things have been improving in recent years, and in order to walk us through the latest gadgets, I'm off to Gadget Dungeon to meet our very own Gadget Master, Sly Winifred. Sly, what technological treats have you got for us this week? Well, you're going to absolutely love this first one. Do you remember mobile phones before the Great Deletion by Barry, cursed be his name? No one does. The Great Deletion pretty much wiped our collective memory. Exactly. So what we've got today is a real revolution in mobile technology. It's the 5G phone. This new phone has got so many modern features, it's got five gears. 5G phone. Five gears? Why does it have five gears, Sly? Well, you've got four gears on the accompanying bike that comes with it and one on the phone to charge it, you see. 
Ah, of course. So we're still with the exercise bike powered model of phone. That's right. But I, I must stress, this is the very latest. This is the cutting edge of cycle to phone technology. As I say, five gears. That's one more than last year's model. One more is always better. <laughs> One more is always better. So what are you going to get from this? Uh, you will only have to cycle up to six and a half hours mm -hmm. to get 20 minutes on this phone. Can you imagine that? Wow, the battery life on that is incredible. I didn't think we were going to get double figures this decade, never mind 20. I mean, we are really pushing the boundaries with this phone. Just look as I press on some of the buttons and show you some of the features on this phone. You can have up to five contacts in this phone. I don't even know five people. Who knows more than five people? Who's ever going to walk more than 20 minutes away from their domicile? But we've got to be prepared, so in some crazy future where we know five, maybe even more people, what other features can we expect to help us into this glorious new technological dawn? Well, on this uh, same phone, I can't stress this enough, all on the same unit. Just look at that screen. I mean, there's a screen in the phone. Can you believe that? Not just the binary display that we had to translate ourselves on past models. Exactly. What are they going to use the screen for? I've heard rumours of a game. Well, there's, you're really going to love this. It's Swamp Mongrel Stomper the Game. Is that the one where you have to stomp the mongrels in order to get them to play our glorious national anthem? That's absolutely right. And again, on the screen, there's three shades of different green on there available. And I mean, the screen, it's that's got to be at least an inch wide. At least. I mean, no one can measure officially because we're not allowed to without special permissions. Never measure your screens. But uh, you can just look at it. I mean, it's so vibrant. Don't you feel like you're living in the future right now? I do, I do. So now that the phone coverage in Yorkshire has been extended, uh, where can we use this phone? You can use this with a radius of nearly seven miles. <gasps> <laughs> and let's be honest, that represents an enormous boon. That's, I mean, that's a, a whole day's travel. When are you going to go more than seven miles from your allotted domicile? <laughs> I certainly never would without the appropriate permissions. And so if you're lucky enough to be one of the 3% of the population who have a mobile phone license, mm -hmm. what are the uh, terms of the contract? There have been some stories of people um, having their first child taken from them after if they defaulted on a month's payment. Are you, are you able to comment on any of these stories? Well, that child is merely taken away as a deposit. As you can appreciate, this is a very sophisticated piece of equipment, very expensive, and for the government to put it out to the people, it requires certain trust. So they take away a child, that child could possibly even be returned someday. And I'll tell you what, while that child's away, you're not paying for food, you're not paying for electricity, you're not paying for them to be in your domicile. It's really a very positive step. Oh, it's like a, a bonus feature almost. Absolutely. If you've got an eldest child who you particularly hate, sign up now. If you want a mobile, take one away from your domicile. Well, Sly, thank you very much for bringing us up to date on all the latest. I will see you on the next show. Absolute pleasure. Okay, Gary's just vomited from exhaustion and the lights in the studio are starting to flicker, so I guess that's the end of another show. Oh, I nearly forgot about the prizes for informing to the authorities. Reporting misdemeanours will win you a tub containing sliced... and the whiskers of a swamp mongrel. Reporting felonies earned you an all-expenses-paid trip to... Finishing with a meal of passive-aggressive clams. But be sure you don't accidentally inform on another government informer, as the punishment for this infringement is having all your hair removed from your body, which is then stitched back inside your stomach. And it can take up to six months for the seeping to abate, resulting in permanent bleeding from the anus. Cheerio, and until next time, may all your brews be strong, may all your boodings be fettled, and may all your swamp mongrels be radiation free. Ta ra! Communications have been severely disrupted.
Make sure you have food, water, and a battery-powered radio with you. This is not a test. Okay, hello. If you're still listening, you've reached the end, so thanks very much for making it all the way through. I'm Noel Curry, the guy who put all this together, and on this episode, uh, you also heard Chris Lum, Ben Spencer, and Adam Martin. And we're all uh, improvisers. We're in a group in Leeds in UK, in England, called Super Trooper Improv. So if you're in the area, please do look us up and check us out. Links to where you can find us will be in the description, along with links to any other things that our guests are involved with. If you want to get involved yourself, you can. If you're an improviser in Leeds or near enough to Leeds to get to it, get in touch with me and I'll see if I can get you on the show. If you're a bit too far away to travel into our studio, aka a room in my house, then you you can still get involved. Just send us in a fake ad or trailer like what you just heard in our show. And if I like it, I'll stick it on the show and I might even send you something. Uh, I don't have things to send out at the minute, but who knows, I may do at some point in the future. So the plan is to stick one of these out every month, uh, but I only get around to doing this in my very limited spare time. So I'm not promising that I'm going to stick to that schedule. And with that in mind, uh, can I please just ask that you don't like or subscribe because the more people that do that, the more time I'm going to have to spend on making this sound actually good. So uh, that would be appreciated. And uh, for the love of God, don't rate and review it. That would be disastrous unless you hate me, you know, rate and review, share on Twitter, Facebook and all that. But if you're a friend of mine, you know what to do. Just leave well enough alone. Thanks very much again for listening and we'll be back again soon. The glorious free republic of your Shire radio show.